The original Donkey Kong Country trilogy on the Super Nintendo are classic tales of friendship conquering all, whether it's Donkey Kong and Diddy in the first game, Diddy and Dixie in the second, or Dixie and Kitty in the third, the two monkeys must work together and balance out their individual strengths and weaknesses to defeat the Crocodilian army of the Kremlins. It doesn't matter what King K. Rule throws at them, the duo can and will prevail over everything that dare stand in their path. When the dust of the war between Cons and Kremlin settles, it's abundantly clear who the victors will be. But everyone knew that already. On this channel, we answer the toughest questions of all. Who is the best con of each DKC duo? Donkey or Diddy? Diddy or Dixie? Dixie or Kitty? In order to arrive at an indisputable conclusion, we will categorise as many of the con's attributes as possible. Even something as insignificant as their idol animations will be judged under the harshest scrutiny. With the introduction out of the way, let's bring on our first contenders. Although the two cons can generally be played the same way, there are a number of key differences between them. Who was blessed with the greener grass? Since 1981, the Con family has been famous for picking up and chucking barrels, and these two are no exception. However, the angle at which they hold them is not the same. Donkey Kong, showing off his superior strength, carries them above his head, while Diddy is unable to emulate his hero and can only hold them in front of himself. It looks like he's struggling to keep his grip on them, but he doesn't actually lose any speed or jumping ability. He's probably stronger than he's letting on. But more importantly, as insignificant as they appear, these angles can affect gameplay. You don't need to throw barrels at foes to defeat them. If they make contact with them in your hands, they will automatically explode and inflict damage. This allows them to be used as a shield to fend off enemies. So which angle is better? I'm going to have to go with Diddy's. DK's angle doesn't come in useful that often. As a side scrolled in platformer, most enemies will obviously be charging at you from the right. Diddy can run through them safely with a bell in his hands without having to slow down. Very satisfying. Aside from possibly the Queen Bee battle or something like a jumping Kremlin about to land on you from above, I don't see how DK's angle would be preferable. The main thing that sets Donkey Kong and Diddy apart is their differences in strength and speed. Donkey Kong's greater strength allows him to defeat some enemies more easily, while Diddy moves faster. The Kremlin's Diddy struggles to kill are clumps and crushers. Clumps protect their empty noggins with helmets, which is strong enough to withstand a blow from Diddy, but not Donkey Kong. They can still be killed by a cartwheel from Diddy, but crushers aren't so kind. They're completely impervious to both Diddy's jump and cartwheel, making them invincible against a smaller hero if there are no barrels in the vicinity. A scary prospect on paper, but honestly, neither of these enemies are numerous enough to be a serious thorn in your side. The only time one of them becomes a major pain is during platform perils, but the Grey Crushers there are immune to DK's attacks as well anyway. Diddy's superior speed is undeniably a more consistent boon. It can be put to use in nearly every level in the game and even allows Diddy to leap further and clear gaps DK could only dream about. The ability to kill two specific and rarely seen enemies just doesn't compare to the thrill of dashing seamlessly across stage after stage. It could be argued that Diddy is a little too fast and you'll have less time to react when playing as him, but it'd be dishonest to count it as a negative. If you're really concerned about it, then just let go of that run button every now and then. I know, I forget that's an option myself sometimes. Once I become more confident with my control of a game, I always prefer to move faster. Perhaps if DK inflicted more damage to bosses, it'd be much fairer. But it's not, and thus, there's no need to mull over it any further. Now let's go over their additional skills. Not too many of these in the first game, that's for sure. Pressing Y while running makes Donkey Kong do a roll attack and Diddy does a cartwheel attack. They can kill foes and if they're used as you're running off a platform, you can do a mid-air jump. They both generally work the same ways, but Diddy's extra speed allows him to chain kills more easily because they cover a larger area, so I'd say that makes his cartwheel superior. But DK has one skill that Diddy has no personal equivalent of, the iconic hand slap. The animation looks bizarre after seeing him ground pound in future games, but what does it do exactly? It can be used to harm nearby enemies or uncover hidden items. 
I don't really think it's all that useful unfortunately. It comes out slowly and as such jumping on enemies heads or rolling into them is much easier. Perhaps if you're desperate for some more bananas, you'll value its presence, I guess. The hand slap serves little practical use throughout the adventure and I honestly forget it exists sometimes. If you really know what you're doing, you can pull off a wave dash hand slap which will earn you serious call points with your most nerdy friends, but we're only focusing on what's useful in the game. Still, it's better than nothing, which is what Diddy got as compensation, but it's not enough to earn DK the win for this round. Game mechanics goes to Diddy. You could have the best personality and be the most fun character to control in any game, but to complete the package, you also need to have an awesome counter design. Which DKC1 con looks the coolest? This game was the first time Donkey Kong's most famous design was first seen, which is still used to this day, even after Nintendo took charge of the DK series again. It's hard to imagine him looking any different now, but it's not really the most creative design when you get down to it. All they really did was take his original design, change his face, and made the top of his hair more curly. He didn't actually receive his iconic tie here. This lone piece of clothing made its first appearance in the Game Boy Donkey Kong. It's difficult to picture him without it, if it were missing he'd look naked in the same way a dog does without a collar. Personally, I think his face can look somewhat goofy at times, and when compared to the original design, his facial expressions are too friendly and not as ferocious. But I guess that's the point since he's not a villain anymore. I probably sound too nitpicky here, and there's nothing inherently wrong with his DKC1 look. It's a simple yet effective design that persists to this very day. On to Diddy, this energetic monkey seems like he's got such a fun personality. I can't help but feel he's having a blast whenever he's cartwheeling throughout the island and defeating his foes. When it comes to his fashion sense, he knows how to match his clothes by wearing a red hat and a red shirt. Even though he wears more clothes than Donkey Kong, he still doesn't wear pants, which is something that I don't know how game designers decide on. Thinking of him wearing pants after seeing him without any, it seems as though they made the right design choice. His tail is quite long and will come in handy in the next instalment of the franchise, but in this game however, it's just a part of his body. Donkey Kong may be the classic of the two cons, but when it comes down to it, I feel as though Diddy Kong wins this one, even if it's not by a ton. Diddy Kong just has that cool factor going for him that Donkey Kong just doesn't seem to quite have. Even when the players stop moving these cons for a bit and have a little break, our judgement refuses to rest. Idle animations might not sound like much, but just take a look at Sonic's increasing boredom the longer he refused to touch the controller, and Earthworm Jim's skipping rope can be lethal if you're named Bob the Goldfish. So let's see how Donkey Kong's own idol animation stacks up against those classics. Wow, pretty damn cool I'd say. If you didn't know, gorillas beat their chest as a display of power and to assert their dominance. Even when he's standing around and doing nothing, DK won't miss the chance to intimidate nearby foes, or perhaps nearby is selling it short. His roar sounds like it echoes loud enough to reach the other side of the island. But is it a display of dominance, or is this how he expresses his frustration at not being able to move, with less fourth wall breaking stairs than Sonic? Who knows, but that roar has always given me chills. And overall, this is undoubtedly one of my favourite idol animations in any game. Now let's see what Diddy can do doing nothing. He takes his cap off and scratches his head. Not quite on the same level, huh? Is this Diddy's unique way of displaying power, or is he in desperate need of grooming from another monkey? He looks very confused, almost as if he doesn't understand why he stopped moving, but is on the cusp of realising why. He'll be swapping that cat for a tin foil hat before long. But yeah, not nearly as epic as DK's roar, unless you prefer those titchy scratching sounds, Donkey Kong is the clear winner in this regard. The boss has been defeated, now's your chance to celebrate with your personal victory pose and really stick it to the big bad you just clobbered. Donkey Kong, having realised who the true hero of this game is, looks directly at the screen and the player to clap them and give a double thumbs up multiple times, but doesn't forget to congratulate himself with a self-clasping handshake, typically used by boxers after they've won a match. A subtle hint of the great ape's secret boxing career? Perhaps. As he does all this, he emits monkey noises which sound too high pitched for him to make. But I've always thought they go well with the boss victory music and in fact it doesn't sound the same without it. 
When Diddy is victorious, he repeatedly throws his cap up and winks at the screen before catching the hat and then repeating this process two more times. You know, I think I'd be more impressed with this if he didn't have to look at the cat before grabbing it. What it tells me is that he lacks confidence in his own ability to win. He never expected to beat the creature that towered over him and only thinks of this celebration on the spot out of desperation. Also, the monkey noises from Donkey Kong's victory animation are absent. Maybe Diddy will grow more confident over time, but right now, DK is already there and wins this round smoothly. But of course, you can't win all the time. Sooner or later, you're going to mess up and one of your beloved red balloons will be popped. Which Donkey Kong is the death animation that incites the strongest responses? Donkey Kong spreads his arms out and looks at the screen with a shocked and frankly hilarious expression. I can just hear him thinking, what have you done to me? Just before he goes flying up in the air, lands on the ground, then sits up looking dizzy as he scratches the back of his head in confusion. It's kind of entertaining and funny, but I can't say I believe he's been hurt. The Donkey Kong from the arcade game had to fall a great height onto his head before he showed visible pain, and I have no reason to believe this one is any different. Learn how to act. Diddy, on the other hand, doesn't look at the camera when he gets hurt. He's in too much agony to think and blame you in the heat of the moment. After he goes flying in the air, he lands on the ground in a similar way to DK, but his hat disappears. Is this the limitations of the SNES at work? Or does Diddy have his own secret career as a magician? When he lands on the ground, he rubs the side of his face with a closed and bruised eye. This guy is not faking it. He is obviously in a lot of pain. And with those cartoony stars spinning around his head and missing his trademark hat, he has become a sorry sight to behold. Diddy wins this round. That's the end of the DKC1 contest. Sorry, I won't be saying that again. And the winner is... Diddy Con! Poor DK, it's literally his first game in the series and he's already been outclassed by a younger hero. No wonder the sprightly little monkey became the main character for the sequel. And that segues into... The Donkey Kong Country 2 Showdown some time later, bitter at their defeat at the hands of DK and Diddy, the Kremlin crew are craving revenge. Perhaps as a callback to Donkey Kong Jr., DK is kidnapped and brought to the Kremlin home island, leaving Diddy to become the new hero and main character. However, without his hero around, Diddy needed his own sidekick to take the role he used to feel. He needed someone who could provide love and support during the darkest of times. He needed his girlfriend DixieCon. But today, their relationship will be put on hold as we find out who is truly the better half of this couple. Hmm, two lightweight, similarly built characters. This one is going to be tough to break down. I can't handle this alone, I need a psychic of my own. And I know just the person. The King of the Croc, Marson of Marson's Domain. Since he's such a big DixieCon fan, he'll be taking over for her parts for the following games. Alright, so with that, let's get this DKC2 showdown between boyfriend and girlfriend started. Diddy may have taken on DK's role, but he still works much the same as he did in the previous title. He's still the faster of the duo, he can still cartwheel and so on. He now has a way to kill crunchers, the crushers of this game, by picking up Dixie and chucking her at them, but she can do the same with him so it's only an improvement in regards to his original self. Rope climbing is a new mechanic that benefits him the most. He also moves along these faster than Dixie can. He appears to be the clear character of choice for speedrunning, but what can his new competitor do? Alright, so Diddy may have won this round against Donkey Kong, but let's see how he fares against Dixie Kong. She may be slower than Diddy Kong, but not by an amount that has ever made me want to switch Kongs when playing the game. Her hair twirl, I would argue, comes in handy more times than Diddy Kong's speed does, Unless, of course, your only mission is to speedrun the game. She has a hair twirl attack that is similar to Diddy Kong's cartwheel, in that you can use it to kill enemies and make it over large gaps. Her using her hair to do this, however, while also having her hair twirl for the air, really adds to how unique the character design for Dixie Kong is overall. Diddy Kong's cartwheel is cool, but I don't think it's as cool as using your hair for both hair twirling in the air and attacking enemies. Not to mention how fun it is to be able to twirl over an entire section of a level. Dixie Kong definitely wins this round. Well, 
Not sure what to say about Diddy at all here. He looks almost exactly as the same as he did in the previous game, only slightly improved to keep up appearances with the rest of the DKC2 graphics. He's still got that simple easy going and cool style to him that instantly endeared him to everyone, but how would that stand up to the new competitor on the block? So in the original Donkey Kong Country, Diddy won this category, and him having the matching shirt and hat helped. However, when it comes to this game, Dixie Kong has him beat by having her hat, shirt, and knee pads all matching in color. In her render, she even has her nails painted pink, but we've been trying to discuss things that are only visible in game, and her nails aren't shown as this as far as I can tell in game. Regardless though, she does have more matching clothes. The bright pink outfit combined with her bright blonde hair really makes her stand out. She also has a very cool vibe to her, considering the fact that she has her shirt tied in a knot, which to me signifies that she has a sense of fashion. For her, it would be too bland to just wear her shirt normally. The knee pads are also a very interesting touch, because I can't imagine these small pieces of cloth really doing much to protect her knees. I would imagine that they just rip when her knees are scraped. So this to me shows again that she has a sense for fashion, because I think this is more for looks. With all of these things mentioned, I think that she has Diddy Kong beat when it comes to this category. Now that he's the main character, Diddy has begun to take this hero in Lark more seriously since the previous installment. He's had the foresight to get himself groomed before heading off on an adventure. He's even taken on a new hobby on the side, which is not only fun but may improve his reflexes. When left idle for long enough, he'll bring out three balls and chuck them around a bit. This activity is known as juggling, but you probably already knew that. Why is he wasting his time learning how to do this when that time could be spent learning how to fight? Where exactly does he keep those balls anyway? In his fur? How does that work? Is a little realism too much to ask? It's a huge improvement on his idle animation from the first game, but how does it compare to Dixie's? Alright, alright, so I will admit juggling is pretty cool, but you want to know what else is cool? Staying hydrated. Dixie Kong knows that sometimes you need to take a break and take care of your own body before going forward. I can only imagine how dizzy she must get when twirling her hair in the air, or on the ground. And if she were to be dehydrated when doing so, I could only imagine how easy it must be to faint. If that happened in the air, well, who knows where she would land. She also shows how rebellious she is too, because she also chews gum as another idol animation. Now you're probably thinking, well, how is chewing gum rebellious? Well, she chews gum while she is drinking to stay hydrated. Now I'm not recommending to ever do this, but Dixie Kong isn't afraid to show that she has a daring side, considering the fact that she could easily swallow her gum while attempting this. But with everything I just described, you can tell that I'm clearly being biased here. So with all kidding aside, I would have to say juggling is arguably the better idol animation. So Diddy Kong does win this round. As with his idol animation, Diddy has gotten a new and more impressive victory animation, and now these celebrations can be seen at the end of every regular stage as well as the boss stages, that was a wise decision. A pair of shades and a boombox will appear out of nowhere and he begins to rap. Again, I don't know where he keeps these objects, but I'm past caring, frankly. Back in the 90s, this was probably the epitome of cool, but today, do people even know what a boombox is? What has remained impressive is the mastery of sound direction on display here. Diddy's rap echoes differently depending on the current location. You wouldn't think much of it today, but back then and for a cartridge system like the SNES, it was revolutionary, and honestly, the tune itself is fine. Catchy even. A massive improvement on his old cat throw animation, that's for sure. Much like how Diddy Kong has something just appear out of nowhere, Dixie Kong does as well. Except for her, it's a guitar. Now, unlike a boombox, which has gone out of style, guitars are here to stay. She takes her guitar and plays a cool little solo before running off to the next adventure. The way she moves her body back and forth while doing this shows how into this solo she is, and she even jumps and melts the ending note. She is clearly a shredder. Now you may have thought that Diddy still had an extra point, because his ending themes have variations depending on the level you complete, but Dixie Kong has this as well. Maybe if we could understand what Diddy Kong was saying, we could judge his lyrical abilities, but we can't. With the guitar, she is actually playing notes, and it doesn't sound like someone messing up in Guitar Hero. I will admit, I personally think the boombox on the shoulder is a cool thing, but it is clearly outdated. And with Diddy potentially only making noises to the beat, and not actually spitting bars, I would have to say that Dixie Kong wins this round as well. 
Not a lot to say here for Diddy, he has almost exactly the same death animation from the first game, with one very minor difference you may have never noticed before. Diddy's cap now floats above his head for a split second before it disappears. Why they did this I have no idea. Is the cap the physical representation of his own life force, and now that he's a little stronger it lasts half a second longer after he's defeated? No, obviously not, don't be stupid. Aside from that, it's exactly the same. Dixie Kong falls down and cries. Before anyone says anything about this, let me tell you that these are tough tears. These are tears that only come from those who want to persevere and continue onward. Ah, who am I kidding? I must admit, she is just legitimately crying. She clearly got a boo-boo and is very upset about this. Even though she may not be showing her tough side when it comes to this, this is definitely more expressive than Diddy Kong's death animation. This animation has you feeling for the character more than what Diddy's does. You can even see the amount of tears flying from her eyes, as she can audibly be heard crying, which just adds more expression to this whole animation. Even though she may be letting her guard down by crying, we all know there is nothing wrong with letting out a good cry every once in a while. You may, however, not want to show your enemy that just beat you that you are doing this though. Regardless, this animation to me is much more expressive, and I think that results in Dixie Kong winning this round. That's the end of the DKC2 showdown, and the winner is... Dixie Kong! It seems this series isn't particularly kind to the main character. The sidekicks are always showing them up. Now we move on to the third and final round with Donkey Kong Country 3. This time, both DK and Diddy get themselves kidnapped. How could you call yourself heroes when you keep getting kidnapped like Princess Peach? The previous game's sidekick becomes the hero once again. It's left to Dixie Con to save the day, along with her cousin, Kitty Con, who joins her on this adventure. DKC3 harkens back to the original game with the duo being a lightweight and a heavyweight again. Only this time, the hero and sidekick roles have been reversed. Kiddy, as the heavyweight, can kill Crumples, but as with the first game, these enemies aren't that common or enough of a nuisance that this ability is essential. Not to mention, Dixie can now pick him up and throw him at Crumples to get rid of them. Kitty can pick up and throw Dixie with more ease because she's lighter, nor does she reduce his speed as much when he's carrying her. That's nice and all, but when it comes to solo running speed, DixieCon is faster. He's not a complete clone of DK gameplay wise. For one thing, he lacks the hand slap, which wasn't really that useful as we saw early on. He also holds barrels to his side, similar to Diddy. As explained earlier, this is better for charging forward without making him stop. But the problem with that is that Dixie is faster, so if you were in a hurry, why would you pick Kitty over her to begin with? And since he can't lift barrels over his head, that proves he can't actually be stronger than Dixie, he's just heavier. Okay, but fear not Kitty, you have your own unique skill to give Dixie's hair to her a run for its money. You can... bounce off water. It's nice, I guess. Actually, where does this come in handy? In one or two stages, perhaps? This is especially weak in comparison to Dixie's hair twirl, the ever useful skill that consistently makes your platforming life easier. I think it's safe to say Dixie wins this round, you just can't compete with her speed and hair twirl. Kitty Khan may be a baby, but he is humongous. If he didn't wear footy pyjamas and didn't act like an infant, you probably wouldn't know he was one, and yet, in spite of his huge girth, his parents still bought him clothes that are too big and baggy for him. This, my friends, is why you test clothes before buying them. When put next to the other stylish heroes from these games, this fashion oversight makes him stick out like a sore thumb. And not in a good way, like a literal sore thumb that causes you a tremendous amount of pain. He is a baby though, I guess, so he's not really to blame when it comes to his outfit. To some, maybe his oversized onesie gives him some charm. So even if someone were to say that Kitty Kong's onesie gives his character charm, there is no denying that Dixie Kong is the overall better designed character. She may not have destroyed Diddy Kong in this category in the second game, but she still won. And there is no way Kitty Kong would beat Diddy Kong in this category. I think it's safe to say that Dixie Kong wins this category by a landslide. Keep Kitty uncharacteristically still and he'll sit down and begin to look around. I'm not sure what's going through his head, 
but before long his attention is drawn towards the foot of his pyjamas, which he'll grab and tug on lightly. Eventually, after a few cycles of this, he pulls on it too hard and causes himself to fall back and hit his head on the ground. But does he learn from this? Of course not. Leave him alone long enough and he'll repeat this process as many times as you allow. Not the smartest thing to do, but what else do you expect from a baby? And to his credit, it doesn't make him wail out, regardless of how often it happens. With Dixie Kong, you might think that we would be able to say that she just has the same idle animations as Donkey Kong Country 2, which would be half true. Only half true because for some odd reason they decided to only keep her bubblegum blowing animation for this game. The only reason I can really come up with for them removing an animation is that maybe they really couldn't think of two animations for Kitty Kong. Or maybe they just wanted them both to only have one period. Even if Dixie Kong carried over both idle animations, I don't think she could beat the comedic approach to Kitty Kong's idle animation. Her only chewing on her bubblegum and blowing bubbles is undeniably not on the same level of Kitty Kong's idle animation, even if it makes him not look like the brightest. As much as I don't want to say it, or admit it, Kitty Kong does win this round. For some odd reason, they did away with the old victory animations from 1 and 2. When either character grabs the flagpole at the end of a the stage, they hang onto it and barely make any motion. Even when they defeat a boss, they don't do anything special at all. But when they free a banana bird from its prison, that's when they decide to break out the party time. Kitty flexes his arms in celebration. I get that he wants to brag, but where's the logic? He didn't use his arms or demonstrated any impressive feat of strength. He had to use his head to work out the puzzle and free the bird. It doesn't make any sense, unless he's flexing his arms as a substitute for his brain. Maybe, I don't know. Honestly, I don't want to work out what goes on in that brain of his. So as Kitty Kong is flexing his non-existent biceps, Dixie Kong is waving her hands in the air for her victory animation. Now, neither of these animations are really unique or anything, but at least Dixie Kong's makes more sense. She is clearly just excited and celebrating her achievement. Kitty Kong is busy flexing when we've already established that Dixie Kong is stronger in a previous category. So yet again, I think it's safe to say that Dixie Kong takes this round. When Kitty is defeated, he reacts exactly as you'd expect from a baby. He falls over, gets up, looks forward and begins to cry non-stop until the screen fades away. Everyone looks back on the SNES with fondness, but between this and Baby Mario in Yoshi's Island, there are way too many babies crying and getting under your skin. Did you know that humans are hardwired to find a baby's cry annoying as a survival instinct for our species? So why did they think it would be a good idea to put that in a game? Something that should be fun? Sure, it makes you not want to die, but there's a point where it crosses the line from a fun challenge into a mission. Dixie Kong's animation is the same as it was in Donkey Kong Country 2. So a lot of you must be wondering, who would win this category then? At first I wasn't really sure, since, well, they are both crying. Except I noticed one key difference. During Dixie Kong's animation, you can see tears flying out of her eyes. With Kitty Kong, there is not a single drop. Now one would say, well, maybe Kitty Kong is just tougher. Even if that is true, him not actually crying just means that he's wailing like the actual baby that he is. He is just being obnoxious. You could argue that a baby wouldn't know any better, but since he is in fact a baby, why wouldn't he be crying actual tears? Dixie Kong's is also more expressive, since she makes an audible noise, rubs her eyes, and cries actual tears, while Kitty Kong just slams the ground and wails. So with that, I think Dixie Kong wins this round. That's the end of the DKC3 showdown. With no drum roll necessary, the winner is Dixie Kong. Honestly, Kitty didn't stand a chance against her, Looks like he won't be getting his own game where he has to rescue DK, Diddy and Dixie. And thank goodness. Well, that's the end of the contest. Oh damn it, I did it again. Big thanks to Marcin for joining me for this video. Be sure to check out his channel. And until next time, I'll see you all later. Take care everyone.